Good morning. Welcome to Reboot, Restarting Your Podcast, uh, day two of PodCamp Pittsburgh 11. Today I'm going to talk about the process of relaunching your podcast after a period of time. It might be a few months, it might be a few years. Um, the goal here is to equip you both with uh, some ideas and with some concrete actions that you can take to go from, uh, boy, I wish I'd kind of stopped, uh, gotten my podcast, go, kept it going, uh, to actually having it uh, live again. So we'll get started. My name is John Ackley. I am a software developer, uh, developer of uh, websites and system designer. I also uh, do a variety of speaking in, on, on a variety of topics. So I'm excited to be here with you today. So a true story, uh, last year I started a podcast on the topic of system design. I interviewed people from around the world, authors, designers, people working with interesting systems, people who have become known for their ability to uh, teach systems to uh, design them. And uh, the podcast was called System Smarts, and I had about 17 episodes that ran from late 2015 to early 2016. And at one point, I actually landed as number one on New and Noteworthy in the technology section of iTunes, which I know that there's some uh, back and forth about whether chasing New and Noteworthy is uh, worth it or not, but I was kind of proud of this one moment uh, in time as I uh, took a screenshot to commemorate the event. So time went on and I was uh, living um, with my family, doing our uh, family thing and having a day job and trying to grind out this podcast on in my spare time. And life kind of happens. And around March, uh, we had a few family events uh, start uh, becoming more difficult to manage, and uh, my podcast screeched to a halt. Uh, it just went dark. I, I had a period of uh, several months where I thought, boy, I'll get that back, I'll get some more interviews scheduled, and I'll get that going, and it just never happened. So that led me to think, boy, what's going on here? Why am I, why did I stop? What, what went wrong other than the lack of time and the lack of planning? Well, it, one of the uh, great pieces of advice that you get if you talk to anyone um, that uh, teaches podcasting is always keep a bank of future episodes so that if you have a sudden event or something that takes you away from your ability to create new podcasts, you've got a buffer of two, three, six, twenty episodes that you can have pre-scheduled for release um, through your normal channel without you having to worry about it. I did not have this. I had a few episodes uh, recorded in advance, but as uh, time marched into 2016, I found it more and more difficult to keep ahead of that. And uh, that led me to basically the middle of March, I had no episodes and no time to create new ones. So I went dark. One of the key things to take away here then is that it's really important to have a two, three, or a half a dozen episodes uh, in the bank that you can rely on if you want to take a vacation or have an emergency. So one of the resources I took advantage of to get my podcast started was Podcasters Paradise. And uh, this isn't really an advertisement for them, but uh, it's a community that uh, has a lot of podcasters involved, new and hopeful podcasters, as well as some established people. And they have a lot of, um, uh, they have a forum with a lot of communication about 
um, problems. So if you have a question, you can go there and, and generally it will be answered by a knowledgeable person you know, very shortly. Well, they also have Q&A with the, the uh, mastermind of this group, uh, John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And uh, I posed the question, John, what are the th some things to keep in mind when I go about relaunching my podcast? And John said, never leave your audience hanging. Always tell them what you're going to do. Tell them what to expect. Tell them if you're going away, how long you'll be away, and what to expect in the meantime. Well, I did not do this, but for your benefit, I pass this advice on to you. So if you uh, not only are in a position where you might run out of episodes and you can't produce any more, you should definitely produce a Be Right Back episode so that they know that you're going to be dark for a little while. There are other techniques you can use. You can also republish uh, old episodes, repackage them in slightly different ways, grab some best ofs. Um, there are lots of content tricks you can uh, do to kind of pro prolong the season, so to speak, but uh, don't leave your listeners hanging. Uh, tell them what to expect. Jumping ahead of my slides here a little bit. A really great up example of a Be Right Back episode was Michael Hyatt. When he reached episode 100 of his This Is Your Life podcast, that podcast was dedicated to closing out the first 100 or his kind of previous run of This Is Your Life and setting up the next season, which would be in a different format and with a, a whole different, not an entirely different focus, but the, um, the way in which he started to promote and package his podcasts changed dramatically at this point. But there was a period of time where he went dark. So episode 100 was published, and then some period of time later, the next season two, so to speak, was um, released, which started the, uh, the next series of podcasts for Michael. And I, I hold this up as a really good example of keeping your listeners really well informed about what your intentions are, what to expect in the future. So. Now, let's talk about practical aspects of getting started again. The first thing you should do is check your equipment. We're going to just talk about steps that you can take right now, this morning, to get started again. Go find your equipment. Make sure it's all there, it's all intact, that the cats haven't um, made a nest in your box of cables and microphones. Uh, you know. Pull them out, dust them off, connect them. If you uh, have certain, you know, amplifiers or other kind of equipment, plug it all back up together. Make sure the cable connections are good, they're clean, and that you have good clean signal through whatever equipment you use. If it's a USB mic you plug into your laptop, that's great. Plug that in. Make sure you get a good signal on your your recordings equipment or software. Second, update your software. So most people use a computer to record their podcast audio. Uh, some people use dedicated hardware. I, I do a little bit of both. I have a digital recorder that I record uh, the um, audio tracks directly on the digital recorder, but then I also feed the line out from that into the laptop and capture that directly in Audition. So make sure your recording software is updated. Make sure your operating system is um, as updated as you can. But then also check for things like drivers and support software. The, um, I use a Mac, and I cannot speak to all of the options that are available to Windows um, and Linux users. But on the Mac, one of the ways in which you redirect audio um, source information is through a set of drivers and one of the early drivers was called Soundflower 
and I used that successfully uh, during my first set of podcasts. But then I found that there was a new one which showed promise for being a little easier to use, a little more comprehensive in how you set up sets of uh, uh, devices for the audio system uh, called Loopback. So I tried Loopback and I installed it and kept and now I'm keeping that up to date. But I found that just that little update changed uh, significantly the amount of um, thinking that I had to do when I set up a podcast recording. So now I can just pick the loopback draw device that I've set up and it just automatically works. It's a very, very nice, very important change. So consider your software, keep, you know, the software you're going to use, make sure it's up to date, but also this is a good opportunity to maybe check out something new that could save you time in your production process and take the friction out of things like post-production where you, you need to clean things up or add multiple um, sources to your podcast tracks. Okay. Now here's the soft stuff, the really soft stuff. These assets that you use are your show template, if you have a format that you use all the time that includes uh, verbiage text that you read at the beginning, boilerplate that you read at the end, and then any interview format or uh, show format that you use. Make sure you take, take the time now to go through that, update it, clean it up, consider whether uh, you want to pivot a little bit with the topic of your show or the theme of your show, and make sure that you capture that in the new copy, in the new version of your assets. But this goes just beyond, it, it goes beyond just the uh, show notes uh, and the production notes. This also includes things like email texts that you will send out to uh, people that you're going to interview, people uh, thanking your interviewers afterwards. It includes the social text of social messages that you would send out. There's a lot of ways in which you can uh, create templates of all of these that will save you time and reduce the amount of overall time and effort that it takes to do production and promotion of your podcast when you're uh, ready to launch. So you see here, this is my, um, well, you see on the left, I use a program that allows me to keep all my program notes in uh, one program. So I have my list of episodes and then for each episode I have my uh, full show rundown, the uh, social templates and the email templates are all baked into this show rundown that allows me to basically have a single source where I can go and copy the template into an email or copy the template into my social sharing program. Uh, and it also is my show rundown, so I have this open during the show and I read uh, directly from it uh, when I have to. I type notes into it uh, live uh, at times to capture what uh, my interview guest is saying. Um, so, you know, these are, these are the kinds of things, if you can get these systematized in advance, they can save you a lot of time as you go forward. Okay, now let's talk really restarting. Now that you've refreshed a lot of things, now what are the ideas that you want to talk about in future shows? What, are, Who are the guests that you want to interview in future shows? You should brainstorm these. You should uh, capture uh, any wild idea that you have. Capture it. Document it in uh, Evernote or a program like Google Docs or Scrivener or some other program that you use to capture ideas. That way you don't lose them. Once an idea kind of pops out of your head, it's a, it's a random event whether it'll ever come back or not. So get it written down as soon as you think of it. Uh, there's a great book by Claudia Altucher that uh, talks about uh, being an idea machine or an idea generator. Uh, so, you know, you might want to check out uh, her book. 
uh, becoming an idea machine. So um, once you have your ideas, then you have to start planning how you're going to execute on those ideas. Is there a sequence that you want to run through from idea to idea to idea or guest to guest? Um, sometimes scheduling guests um, becomes its own project. How do you schedule guests? Well, sometimes they have limited availability, so you take them when they're available. If you have a lot of guests and are fairly successful, you can use a program like Schedule Once to um, ensure that your time is effectively used by, by uh, getting your guests to pick their time. So you pre-assign, and I'll advance the slide here. So in terms of scheduling, a program like Schedule Once allows you to uh, pre-determine avail your availability, and you send a link to your guest saying, please pick any of my available slots, and we'll set up uh, the, the interview call for that particular time. And then once once they've picked a time, the system, the Schedule 1 system, will send uh, you an email to approve it, and then that allows you to start the dialogue with that guest about exchanging um, you know, interview contact information like uh, their Skype account or their mobile account or some other whatever teleconferencing um, app that you're going to use. Um, but this brings up a more broad idea that if you don't schedule something, it may not get done. So uh, the combination of something like Schedule Once for establishing uh, your interview slots with your guests, combined with something like Google Calendar or other, another calendaring system, that allows you to control your time and to govern the amount of time that you have for have set aside for the podcasting uh, activities that you need, but it also allows you to set aside time for in more in a more general way for business building activities that you need to do if you're t attempting to or if po this podcast is a part of your overall business strategy, well, which it probably is if you're paying attention to this. So uh, schedule it. Make sure that it. Uh, uh, is on a calendar that you're paying attention to. And that way you can have a greater confidence that it will get done. So how do you uh, attract the guests that you are interested in interviewing? You may not know some of these people. Uh, for instance, one of my guests, several of my guests, I had to reach out through a friend of a friend to contact them. Uh, one was a complete cold email, actually several were, that I sent out to um, a famous author that I was very uh, taken with. I enjoyed reading his material for you know several decades. And I reached out to his publicity email and said, hey, Jerry, I'm doing this podcast on systems. Would you like to be on the show, and uh, boy, he wrote back. I was so surprised and thrilled. So, uh, uh, so how you go about inviting them is very important. The language you use, the uh, tone that you use uh, is uh, really important. Capturing the value it will give to your guest is also really important. So you have to always approach communication to someone that you are asking for something, what's in it for them? You have to keep that in your mind. How do you convey to them what they will get out of being on your show or helping you with something? So you can see in my email template here, and, and if you uh, go to johnackley.com slash podcamp, you can download uh, both the slides from today and a swipe file that includes all my email templates uh, and my show rundown, which you'll have to modify to be your own show, but you'll get the sense of what I've been doing in my own show production. Um, but 
So this email template basically frames the conversation that I want to start with my potential guest. I want to say I have been reading a book that you wrote or listening to a podcast that you uh, were on and what other, what other means uh, they, they, they reached me. Uh, tell them how you, you learned about them and then invite them to be on your show and then explain to them without being too uh, salesy what they would get out of it. My audience is this kind of demographic and they, uh, you know, they buy this kind of product if, if that's um, you know, something you know about your audience and convey to them that you know, it, would be value, it would provide some value to your guest. Likewise, convey the value your guest would have to your audience. So you want to do both of those. That way, the guest understands from the very beginning of the conversation how they can best engage you and your audience. Um, you can tell them how to look at uh, some of your, uh, listen to some of your episodes if they're interested to find out more. And um, if you've got a particular episode that captures um, an aspect of your show that would be uh, most interest them, then let them know what that is. And then finally, you don't, you, the, the in, invitation to schedule is something you want to be, uh, take into consideration. If you're just reaching out for the first time, it may be too soon to in, ask them to schedule something. So all you're trying to do is engage them initially in, with an interest in your show, um, but if, if you're more familiar with them, you might just say right away, Grab a time slot and, and we'll set this up. So this all kind of, you have to just get a sense of how familiar you are or can be with the person you're asking to be on your show. And close with something really positive and uh, keep it short so that they read it. If it's too long or has a lot of complex uh, structure or pictures, they'll probably, it'll probably just get routed to spam and you you will miss an opportunity to communicate with them. So, okay. So, once you have a lineup of guests or a lineup of topics that you're going to talk about, it's time to do the production. Get in the saddle. Uh, take time out of your schedule and sit down and do your show. Nothing Nothing can be done until you actually record some audio. The uh, best way to do this is to have a day of a week that you prefer and dedicate a couple of hours to getting everything set up, um, all of the requirements that you need to have the quietness that you need or the environment that you need. Make sure that that all happens, have a checklist for you know, turning off noisy objects, uh, shutting down or shutting, um, you know, curtains that might help damp noise from the outside. All of the tips that you would get from other podcast uh, schools apply here. So just, you know, set yourself up for success and just do it. Get started. So once you have at least one in the can, then you need to get the word out. You need to let know on social media through if you have an email list through your email list um, through any uh, social groups that you're a part of Facebook groups LinkedIn groups uh, Google groups spread the word uh, it is not gauche to let people know that you offer something of value you don't have to try and you know convince them to buy anything necessarily just say hey there's a great interview with somebody that you might find interesting on my show that came out this week. Let them know. Uh, let them know in advance sometimes. It's also useful to, uh, if you're uh, trying to, um, you know, if you are trying to set up a product offering in conjunction with some part of your podcast, um, you can do some pre-launch communications as well. Let them know it's, it's tease them with what's coming out and uh, then, you know, drop a few teases uh, over a course of a week. And then finally, the big announcement 
uh, comes out that uh, it's, it's now finally available. Uh, also, make sure that you're hooked into as many podcast distribution channels as possible. So, you know, we're all familiar with iTunes and Stitcher, but there are dozens of others. Uh, Google Play is now formally taking podcasts and making those available, and um, I can't even begin to list all the rest of them. Uh, so seek those out and uh, you know, announce your show there. And as I hinted a moment ago, get social. Go uh, on the social networks that your audience are most active on, and maybe a few others to try and entice new people. Uh, definitely do Facebook. I'm sure that um, you know some of the billion people on Facebook are interested in what you're doing. Uh, the um, use of Twitter is very useful because it's searchable from outside. The use of LinkedIn is uh, useful if your podcast has a business focus. So there are you know uh, Pinterest and the uh, Instagrams and all of the other socials are really. Um, niche focused in a lot of ways and if your audience is there you must go there and uh, announce and have a dialogue with your audience about your show so I use a program called CoSchedule a service called CoSchedule that allows me to write in my blog post that I'm about ready to which includes my show notes and I use the Libsyn right now I use the Libsyn plugin to upload my podcast file directly to them from my WordPress dashboard. This CoSchedule plugin allows me to go directly to the three big socials that I use. I use Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And I put all my social comments for the next two weeks right in my blog post. So when I click publish, all of this stuff gets scheduled at once. I never have to go back and do another social. I can. I, I interact. I pay attention when people respond, but I don't. Ha I don't have to set time down and say, "Oh, I need to go back and promote the episode I launched last week." So all the promotion for the social networks that I use all happen automatically the minute I click publish on uh, WordPress. Uh, other. Uh, social aggregator or social dashboard services are things like Buffer and uh, Scythe and Hootsuite. Uh, Hootsuite can be very useful for uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, Buffer is also useful for um, doing the same kind of thing if you don't use WordPress or if you don't have um, another means of um, kind of aggregating these socials at the same time, but Buffer can do that for you and Hootsuite as well. Okay, so for interviewing, the guests love to know their show went live. This is, this is a really important touch point. Once the show has gone live that day, you should send an email to your guest. Ensure that they know how to share it if they want to. It is probably not uh, proper to uh, assume they will share it or, or to directly ask them to share it. They may not be interested in sharing it, but if you provide all the information for them to share it, then if they do so, and you can, it, you can, um, you can use language that allows them to, un to feel comfortable sharing it is all I'm saying the uh, you know so I'm so excited to share your interview with my audience is permission basically for them to do the same thing with their audience without directly saying please share with your audience so if you get a really rock a big rock star on your show with a ginormous audience uh, it is your to your benefit to for them to share but um, you want to make it easy for them to do so without pressuring them to do so. And again, this is uh, an email template that is going to be in the swipe file that you can download directly after the show. So uh, let's see. There's 
Oh, this middle paragraph, I tweak. I always tweak this. We had a great chat. I customize that every time to make it very personal to the guest that I was speaking with. So whatever topic we talked about, whatever joke we shared before recording started or after, I try to engage the guest with that, that mem remembrance of our interaction so that they, if it was a month or so ago, that this will help them kind of tease out their memory of, of recording the show with you. If, you know, if it was yesterday, then, you know, maybe, you, you know, you can still tweak this to be uh, very personal, but it doesn't, uh, you know, you're not necessarily needing to, you know, remind them of the interaction so much. Uh, so, uh, again, the uh, swipe file will, will be included with uh, the slides if you're want to download that after the conference. And then finally the best information or the best suggestion I have for you at this point is go do it. There's uh, nothing stopping you if you did this once. Uh, you know that it can be done. You know that the uh, technology will not be in your way. You know that the only thing holding you back is your willingness to pick up the uh, phone or, or open up an email and invite your guest or and if you and if you're a, not an interview show the kinds of topics that you want to cover are right at your fingertips you can uh, become an idea machine brainstorm those ideas get them uh, organized in a way that allows you the freedom to just start recording turn on the mic and record your show get it out there people want to know one of the great things about podcasting is the great number of voices and the perspectives and the topics. If you um, are holding back because you feel you need to be perfect or you feel you don't have time to make it just right enough to release, you're really doing yourself a disservice and your audience. So, so do it. I, I missed recording for the last couple of months and the last last two weeks when I kind of got the machine cranked up again in preparation for this talk, I, I feel really good about both my show and my contribution to the podcasting community. So go out there and do it. Be, a, be the podcaster you want to be. All right. Oops, I went the wrong way. And thank you very much. I have questions. I'm not sure how people watching the streaming can get me a question, but if there's a way, uh, give it a try. I'm here for the next uh, 20 minutes or so and can field any questions. Uh, again, if you go to johnackley.com slash podcamp, uh, you uh, can uh, give me an email address and I will email you a link to the uh, show notes are the, uh, the slides and my swipe file, which includes show notes and all my email templates. So, uh, thank you again, and have a great show. Any questions? What, 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 what guest are you proudest of ever having on the show? So I mentioned uh, Jerry a little while ago. Um, I read a lot of Jerry Weinberg. Uh, he's a systems thinker and designer. He uh, wrote a great book called The Secrets of Consulting, which I bought maybe 10 or a dozen copies of and given them all away to people that I say, oh, you need to read this book. This is a great book. So um, yeah, emailing Jerry and him being so warm and open and responsive to being on the show. And he's suggested other guests that I've followed up with. And we've um, you know, I don't, I don't have a long, you know, uh, frequently recurring conversation with him, but boy, he, he'll answer my emails when I send him a note, and it's been really uh, very rewarding to have done that. And I was very afraid at first, you know, it was like, uh, here's Jerry Weinberg, like this great author, and I should never have been, because it was just silly to think about. So yeah, Jerry Weinberg, but I've had a lot of great guests. I've been very happy. Um, the um, the host of um, several podcasts have provided some really great insights on my show. Paul Maskill and uh, um, 
uh, one of the lead engineers at uh, Infusionsoft, Paul Sokol, was a guest um, in March. Um, I've had farmers and uh, all sorts of folks on that did have very interesting systems and they were able to talk about it and convey, you know, kind of the kernel of, you know, why this system has special properties and, you know, how it's kind of often overlooked. In fact, uh, the first show that I did for a second, I'm calling it season two, is uh, uh, the host of VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. And John Melly has, uh, uh, several projects, one of which is a blog about being a voiceover athlete. And he talks about how the physical characteristics uh, and your physical health all contribute to your ability to have a great voiceover skill. And, and uh, that was a great show. So that was, I just released it Friday. So I'm pretty excited about that too. Yeah, thank you. They invited you back. He has. Uh, he's in, uh, extended an invitation to be on his show, uh, which is another thing. So, you know, it's a common thing. If you interview podcasters, podcasters often have a reciprocal thing. Not always, of course, because the um, audiences don't necessarily match. But uh, in this case, uh, he, he suggested he would really like to get me on his show. So we'll be talking this week about that. So, yeah, it's a great uh, opportunity for opening up and making connections. That's why I like the interview format. It's, I could sit and talk about my boring topic, my, mm -hmm. you know, boring to me, uh, not boring to me. It's exciting to me, but I'm afraid it's boring to other people, right? System design. Does that sound exciting? Maybe. Uh, I'm really passionate about it. I love it. But uh, I think bringing new perspectives in by inviting guests is a way of introducing my guests to interesting systems and we have kind of a guided conversation through the course of the interview about aspects of the system that are interesting like uh, farming uh, the gentleman that i interviewed uh, who does market gardening he does um, all kind of information gathering over the course of the season he talks about um, you know, gathering uh, information about when things are planted and how he overlaps crops and how he uh, picks a very specific dimensions to the beds that he uses so that the equipment works right and so that there's um, no waste in movement, no waste in time, no waste in, you know, other things. And those kind of efficiencies, those system, that system thinking uh, is very useful and can um, broaden the understanding of systems for my audience and for me, and I love that, so. Yeah, it's neat stuff. And I'm done way before time, holy cow. But it's that, I mean, that kind of points out how easy it should be for us to kind of get back in the saddle, right? You know, it, it, we've done this once, and it should shouldn't take um, you know, an act of Congress for us to kind of get started again. Of course, it did for me. I, I had to promise to give a talk <laughs> on rebooting my podcast for me to actually do it. Uh, I find that if I want to learn something or uh, accomplish some big thing, I set a goal that I make very public, and that really holds me accountable to it. So, uh, so yeah. Um, Thank you again very much. Thank you. How would they uh, ask questions? Streaming online, they? So I was in a session yesterday and someone, oh boy, how did they get that in? I think they knew someone who was in the audience, in the room, and they texted them. Yeah, I think that's how they, I'm not sure. Um, 
you know, in general, I, I have to ask Mike and Missy if they uh, if they actually have a channel that they're advertising for that. And you know, so if it was Twitter, yeah, if it was Twitter, you know, we could have a Twitter feed up that's just watching exactly, it's just watching one tag. And if the you know PodCamp PodCamp Q, you know, kind of came in, we could respond to that immediately. For, we'll do that for PodCamp 12, right? And I will uh, hopefully not have to do the reboot talk again. <laughs> not for myself, anyway. Emergencies. Oh, life gets in the way, and. You know, you, you pick your priorities, and at the time I had a day job, so my priority was getting to my day job and managing things with the family, and uh, now I don't have a day job. This is my job, or one of them, so I'm very happy to jump back in and make it part of my business plan again. So, Thank you very much. I'm gonna, and thank you very much to our online audience and future viewers.